In the face of California's mega drought, farmland across the state is at a crossroads. Thanks for staying with us at 5:30. I'm Curtis May. And I'm Adrian Moore. Some land is now being repurposed to make sure it's viable for generations to come. I traveled to the Central Valley for a closer look at rewilding. This withered and water starved cornfield is a snapshot of some of the farmland of the future. And I always say we're a poster child for this issue because we're not doing it right. We're taking too much water out of the ground. Yeah, if you went out to. Out Michael Hagman is the executive director of the Linmore Irrigation District. He also owns this 160 acre plot of fallowed ag land. Land he could soon be paid to take out of production under the multi benefit land repurposing program controlled by the Department of Conservation. With those $10 million grants, regions can begin to collaboratively plan for how they want to repurpose land and begin to provide payments to farmers to voluntarily implement those repurposing projects on their properties. Among those types of repurposing projects is what some experts refer to as rewilding or restoring land to its native habitat. It's a bold approach that could make a big dent in the drought. Studies estimate that upwards of a million acres of farmland are going to come out of production in the next 20 years or so in order to balance our groundwater supplies and adapt to climate change. While the idea of repurposing ag land is still taking shape here in Tulare County, it's already showing promise about 150 miles north with the largest floodplain restoration project in California at Dos Rios Ranch. But we've saved hundreds of thousands of gallons of water every single year simply through the actions of this project. Growing this native vegetation in the Julie Rentner is the president of the conservation organization River Partners, which bought this 2100 acre former dairy ranch outside of Modesto, where alfalfa and winter wheat was also grown and transformed it with thousands of native grasses, shrubs and trees. It conserves water. Um, by reducing how much evapotranspiration actually happens here, right? When you transfer uh, lands from kind of thirsty crops into more drought tolerant native plants, they just use less water, which is exciting. But this living lab, which sits at the confluence of the San Joaquin and Tuolumne rivers, goes beyond water conservation. The floodplains here act as a shock absorber for flooding. When snowmelt is happening and water is gushing off of the mountains down here to the bottom of the valley, floodplains like this one act as a sponge and they just take all that flood water and they let it soak into the ground and so it can be used later in the dry times. After more than a decade of work and millions in funding, Dos Rios has also restored a booming ecosystem for salmon, rabbits, and migratory birds. Increased biodiversity provides a variety of ecosystem services that to the degree that we restore habitat, that that restored habitat can do everything from uh, reducing flood risks uh, to uh, sequestering carbon. That's essential. Back in Tulare County, Michael Hagman admits he's anxious, yet optimistic, knowing such a dramatic shift in farmland use is an adjustment, but one that can ensure land viability for future generations. We know it's going to be difficult. We've got to make changes. Now this story is part of a special we've been working on with CBS news stations across California. We've traveled up and down the state to show you what a warming climate is doing to our water and what we can all do about it. You can watch Parched California's Climate Crisis this Thursday at 7 o'clock streaming on CBS Sacramento and on Pluto TV.